Now, there are also a couple of links up here that I wanted to show you really quick. <clears throat> These are links from a uh, publisher that publishes a book that's specifically on user testing. And they have some really nice examples. It's a really good idea, especially when you are looking to put together your final project write up to look at what they have on their site. But they do have some other things that can be very helpful. One is a informal test plan. Again, you don't need to create this yourself, especially since this one is a little long. But an informal test plan is something that you may see when you go out in an industry. It basically tells you what is going, going to be done. Why are we doing this? Step by step, what is going to be done? It tells you what the various scenarios and the testing procedures are. It tells you how long each one should take. If you look further in this document, it's going to be a little more detailed. Usually what happens is you create a test, a test plan and you're able to copy and paste the information from the test plan into your test documents, as well as some of this into your final report. So it can help you organize things. Now for the purposes of our group project, just doing an outline like this will probably be helpful for you in terms of organizing it. But when you get a chance, go ahead and look at the document. You can just skim through it really quickly, and you'll see it tends to be very well organized. And it's also written in a way that someone else can pick this document up and perform the same tests. <clears throat> now they also have some additional sample forms that you can look at. So they have, for example, a video consent form. So that, remember, our consent form doesn't have any verbiage on video. Go ahead and go to this one. Copy paste. Very easy. Why invent the, reinvent the wheel? There are some other forms you can go ahead and look at. An observer form, which is basically our fa a facilitator form. They have some checklists that are very, very nice. So a checklist for the moderator actually is one that students in the past have found very useful. It tends to be a little bit more detailed than we need for our project, but It provides you with a very nice checklist that you can use when you are running your participants. Because remember, in order for ha to have your environment the same for all of your participants, that means you need to reset it. That is more complicated for some groups than others. This will help you remember that. So before the participant arrives, be sure product is loaded properly and ready for the first scenario. So on and so forth. And I think this one even actually reminds you to say thank you. Uh, let's see, post questionnaire, provide stipend, oh, oh yes. Upon completion, generously thank your participant for coming and helping improve the user experience of the product. So I do recommend that you take a look at the forms and use something like this. It's going to make your life much easier. One other thing, this is at the same site. They have a whole bunch of documents that you can look at. They actually have added to this uh, since I last taught this class over the summer. They have a whole bunch of sample reports. They have sample test plans. They have sample final reports. They have sample presentations. They even have sample personas. Take a look at them. But again, keep in mind, what we are doing for this class is much simpler than what you have here. Some of these documents are 40 pages long. They may have a report that's 40 pages long. Do you think I want a report that is 40 pages long? No. I most definitely do not. So great for guidelines to see the, the, some of the details you want to include but make it appropriate for this class. Make sense? But some really great resources. Now if you're really excited, I've yet to have anyone who's this excited, but just in case, if you're really excited, if you look at the menu over here, they have a lot of resources that you can look at. 
right, can be very, very helpful. When you are preparing your documents, you should also be discussing when you want to run your participants. Talk about your group's availability. Who's going to be running the participants? Where you're going to run them? That's all part of your preparation, and you need to write that up in your final project. When you are recruiting participants and thinking about how you're going to recruit them, these are some of the things I strongly recommend to make your life easy. One, you may need to offer more than one session. If you can get all five in one session, so let's say you're going to do it Saturday afternoon, awesome. Keep in mind, though, you may have to do more than one session. You have to do a Saturday afternoon and a Monday morning. Just throwing those out there. The more flexible you are, the more likely you are to be able to get participants. If you're too flexible, what do you think happens? You're constantly, yeah, whatever. You're constantly running around. You may have to have three or four sessions. Try to keep it to one. But be flexible enough so that if you need to, then go ahead and have two sessions. But you need to talk about when this is going to be done. Remember to set a total time limit for each participant. I suggest that you do this not only for the overall testing, but for each task. Because if you get to, let's say you have a task that you think is supposed to take five minutes. And now it's 10 minutes, and they have not been able to complete it. I want you to take a look at your participant and, ha and see what do you think they're feeling. Because what do you think they're feeling? Frustration. Frustration. You don't want them to be frustrated forever. So find a reasonable time limit if you see that they have not finished within that time limit. Or if they are very frustrated, even if it's before the time limit, if they're very frustrated, go ahead and stop them and go to the next task. What you will need to do is explain to them that, again, this is something that they are helping you discover. OK, we, you have helped me discover that this is something that's very frustrating for users. Boy, we better fix that. Remember, it's not the user. All right. Create a schedule of appointments, and you want to make sure you are telling your participants that they are making an appointment. Otherwise, they will assume that you are sitting there in that spot just waiting for someone to show up. Even if it's like in the library, they'll be expecting you to be sitting there waiting for someone to show up. Let them know that you will be waiting for them. You are setting an appointment. You will be waiting for them. Yes? Set an appointment the same day. Now, I have I have had um, you know I, I have had groups that kind of stood out in the middle of the library and recruited people that way, and kind of just went and grabbed someone. It's like, oh, well, are you willing to participate? And then they could do it right then. You can do that. I don't know how difficult that is in the library. I've never tried it myself. Um, but generally, it tends to be easier if you're not going to if not you're not going to run them immediately. You definitely tell them it's an appointment and you'll be waiting for them. Make sure you stagger your arrival times of participants for two reasons. One, you don't want them to have to be waiting on you. You don't want to be finishing up with one participant and your next participant shows up, and they have to sit and wait. And two, because you need time to reset your environment. You need time to be able to collect your notes, make any other notes that you have in your head that perhaps you didn't have time to, to write down. Get them organized, and then prepare for your next participant. I suggest leaving at least 15 minutes between appointments. The other thing you want to remember is we're in Miami. Is, are, are people in Miami, are they ever on time? Always. Uh, oh, yeah, always. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, you guys don't know any of my relatives, apparently. People in Miami are notorious for not being on time. All right, so remember that. Like even for my wedding, I had two different times. The ones for my relatives were an hour earlier than the actual wedding. They all made it on time <laughs> to the real time. All right, so there are going to be people who are going to be late, so remember that. Also think, about, think of it this way. 
If they're driving to campus, think about Miami traffic. Yeah. Oh, no traffic. Yeah. Yeah, I wish. All right, so keep that in mind. Make sure that the location is quiet, as quiet as possible. Don't do it in the middle of the mall where people are going to be distracted. You want them to be able to pay attention to what you're asking them to do. And I already mentioned to set a time limit for each task also. 